The Nashville Predators have been a middling team over the past five seasons. While in each of those past five years they've made the playoffs, the results have been drastically different each season. Despite a miraculous cup run in 2016-17, they would fail to advance past the second round in the next four seasons. After a mediocre past two years, many began to question what Nashville's role in the NHL was going into this 2021-22 season. In the offseason, the Predators made a few moves to suggest that they were going to be looking more so to a rebuild. They traded away longtime Predators veterans Ryan Ellis and Victor Arvidsson, in return receiving two picks for Arvidsson and Philippe Myers and Cody Glass for Ellis. These were big blows to the team that were expected to severely impact the team's performance. Arvidsson was widely recognized as a solid middle to top six winger, averaging around half a point per game over his last two seasons with Nashville. The loss of Ellis was even bigger, as despite his injury concerns, whenever Ellis did play for Nashville, he was seen as a true top-pairing defenseman. Ellis put up solid points on the blue line, and is very well liked by those who pay attention to advanced analytics. These moves suggested that Nashville would attempt to rebuild, and the idea made sense as much of their cap space was locked into contracts such as Matt Duchesne and Ryan Johansson, players that dropped off significantly after signing these deals with the Predators. Interestingly, those two in addition to many of their other forwards have played a large part in the surprising success of Nashville this year. The main theme of the Nashville Predators forward group this season is resurgence. As previously mentioned, Duchesne and Johansson were seen before the season as two of the absolute worst contracts in the NHL. Both of these players have bounced back significantly from their past few years. In only 10 more games than last season, Matt Duchesne has already produced three times more points than he did last year, with 43 points in 44 games. Johansson's increase isn't quite as drastic, but his production rate has also increased a ton, rising from 0.46 points per game in 2021 the 0.78 points per game this season. These two aren't the only ones who have rebounded, though. Michael Granlund, who was locked into Nashville for the next three years at $5 million per season, has bounced back from a 27-point performance in 2020-21 to a 39-point season thus far in 2021-22. The improvement of all three of these players has had a massive impact on the success of the Predators this season. It doesn't hurt that many of their other forwards have only gotten better as well specifically Philip Forsberg. Forsberg, for the first time in his career, is averaging well over a point per game. Additionally, 24 of his 40 points are goals, putting him among the league lead in goals at a pace of 0.69 goals per game. Interestingly, Forsberg's contract expires in the offseason. Whether the Predators decide to re-sign him or let him go should be the deciding factor on if they believe themselves to be a true contender or not. In the meantime, though, the Predators will count on Forsberg's team-leading production to help lead the forward group and the rest of the squad to continued success. Nashville has been best known over the years for their defense, and that still holds true as the team's identity many years later. Over the past decade, players such as P.K. Subban, Shea Weber, and Ryan Suter have all played significant minutes for the Predators on the blue line. Today, though, the two clear stars on the back end are Roman Yossi and Matthias Ekholm. Yossi has been well recognized as a superstar defenseman for years, notably winning a Norris Trophy as the league's best D-man in 2019-20, and placing in the top five in voting two separate times. Yossi continues his incredible production this year, on pace for a point per game for the first time in his career. Matthias Ekholm, however, flies much more under the radar than Yossi. In comparing their point totals, it's easy to see why. Despite playing only around 100 more games than Ekholm, Yossi has around 250 more points for his career. With a career-high points-per-game average of just over 0.5, Ekholm has never been seen as a scorer. Ekholm's analytics suggest that he is fantastic at driving play offensively, despite not always having the points to go along with those numbers. Additionally, he's been capable of playing at the highest level defensively. Despite lower numbers over the past two seasons, Ekholm is clearly one of the better two-way defensemen in the NHL. Yossi and Ekholm are relied upon to crunch big minutes for Nashville, and have done so successfully for many seasons now. If Nashville wants to succeed in the playoffs, their defensive system depends on Yossi, Ekholm, the rest of the defensive core, and one of the most underrated goaltenders in the NHL. In the many seasons that Pekka Rene played for Nashville, he was recognized as one of the best goalies in the league, despite often being inconsistent. 
His replacement holds many of the same qualities as Rene, but brings much more consistency. The backbone and most important piece of the Nashville Predators is clearly UC Soros. Soros, when entering the NHL, quickly became one of the best backups in the league when playing behind Rene. When Soros took over as Nashville starter in 2019-20, he showed just how great he was. When Rene was in net that year, he had a goals against average of 3.17. When Soros was in net, his average was 2.7. Soros had a save percentage of 0.914, while Rene sat at 0.895. Since that first year adjustment period as the starter, Soros has been one of the best goalies in the NHL over the past season and a half. Last year, in 36 games, Soros had the fourth best save percentage in the league among goalies who played 20 or more games, with a .927. This was despite playing for a team in Nashville that was considered much less likely to be contenders than the teams of the three goalies above him, those being the Hurricanes, Islanders, and Golden Knights. In the playoffs that year, against one of the top scoring teams in the league, the Hurricanes, Saros had a .921 save percentage. This year, Saros continues his excellence, again averaging above 920 with a .925. His record is solid as well, holding a record of 24-13-3. You see Saros is the true star of the Nashville Predators, and their success depends on his continued excellence. It's tough to say where the Predators will finish the 2021-22 season. For a top 10 team in the league, they lack the true top end scoring talent many of the teams surrounding them have. On the other hand, they have one of the best defensive systems and one of the best goalies in the league. Given the competitive nature of the Western Conference, it's possible the Predators don't even make the playoffs. On the other hand, the Predators could catch fire and surge to a top 5 spot in the league. Ultimately, the success of the Predators hinges on the performances of UC Saros. Should he continue to play as he has, the production of Forsberg, Duchesne, Yossi, and the rest won't matter as much. The Nashville Predators are one of the league's most interesting and underrated teams, and I'm excited to see how the rest of their 2021-22 season plays out.